Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to do another spooky reaction video. This one's to face some top fives channel, and the video is called Top Eight Scary Videos That Are Downright Terrifying. Let's hope they are. Uh, remember to sub the channel, pop by Faceham's channel as well if you wouldn't mind doing so. The link is in the description and drop them a sub. Hit the thumbs up on the video, leave your comments, any feedback is appreciated. And let's get the cans on and jump straight into it, shall we? Let's hope it's a good one. Welcome to Fearsome Top 5. Get ready to witness eight truly terrifying ghost videos. Number one. Over on the Tony Baloney YouTube channel, a man named Tony often uploads short videos from his daily life, often clips of fond memories he'd like to look back on. But one video on his channel caught my eye as it stood out from the rest. Simply titled, Ghost Setting Off My Ring Doorbell, Tony believes he may have caught something paranormal. Creepy shadow floating about there, mind. As the video begins, a dark mist eerily passed in front of the camera. This unsettling dark anomaly almost looked as if it ducked down, as if it were trying to avoid being seen by the camera. Although it simply looks like a black mist, it seems to move with intention. I'll be the first to admit that I don't have a clue what the hell this is. So please put any possible explanations in the comments below. That's pretty cool. Numbers. That is not what you're saying, but yeah, that, that was a pretty bizarre one, to be honest. Um, it might have just been Summit causing a shadow on the light or something, I don't know, but it, they did move quite eerily. What do you guys make of it? Two. A Reddit user from England that goes by T Always Helps works in a hotel bar. Other employees, as well as customers, firmly believe the bar, restaurant, and kitchen are definitely haunted, as unexplainable things tend to happen around the establishment. And with a security camera rolling inside, it was only a matter of time before some of these eerie events were caught on video. Okay. What? Behind the bar, a large glass abruptly fell to the floor, shattering one fairy note to pieces. Then months later, as a man was knelt down working, another glass spontaneously plummeted to the floor. That one. That's peculiar. He glanced around, but no one else seemed to notice. Then in the kitchen, a wet floor sign fell to the ground. That could have been something off camera or pulled by something, but them glasses were a bit strange, like. Completely on its own. These consistent occurrences could potentially be nothing out of the ordinary, possibly caused by dodgy shelves. But there's always a chance that an annoying ghost is simply pulling pranks. Dodgy shelves, man. Number three. Yeah, like I said, the first one time, maybe, but the second one when the guy was there and it blatantly looked like it, well, I got pushed or pulled off the the shelf. But um, yeah, strange. Back in April, a Reddit user called Green Swan Twenty Twenty went out for a walk with her dog around three thirty. She walked about a half mile down a dirt road with vast cornfields surrounding her. But as she glanced at the field by her side, she noticed something bizarre hovering in the sky. She quickly pulled out her phone, and this is what she managed to catch. What is that? Not the best camera person in the world, like, are they? 
Hovering above the cornfield was a strange dark object. Not too high off the ground, this peculiar object floated in place, appearing to be completely stationary. From the looks of it, it's safe to rule out the possibility of this being a plane or helicopter. And from its unusual shape, it doesn't resemble any drone that I've ever seen. According to this Reddit user, this footage was captured in Fresno County, California. And this wasn't the first time she's witnessed something in the sky, potentially not from this world. Number f That was a... Let's roll that back. Because the shape of it was just weird. The ability of this being a plane or helicopter. And f No idea what that could be. I thought it might have been a balloon or something at first, but it's got like weird leg things sticking out the back of it. Any suggestions? That's mad. In Fresno County, California, and this wasn't the first time she's witnessed something in the sky, potentially not from this world. Number four. A YouTuber named Steve Ronan is a passionate explorer who posts videos exploring abandoned and oftentimes haunted locations. He set his sights on venturing inside a massive abandoned mansion located in Japan. This beautiful structure was built in 1910 and belonged to a successful businessman. After a long and prosperous career, he passed away in 1964 at the age of 86. Since being abandoned in 2005, the mansion has sat untouched, left to be devoured by the forest surrounding it. Steve and his friend Dave trudged through an overgrown path before eventually finding an entrance. And to their surprise, everything had been left inside. But as they explored the home, strange things began to happen. Wow, it's a, it's a giant living room. Whatever made that noise is not making it anymore. Dave. Jeez. Dave. What the hell was that? What the hell? That was you. That was me. That was you. That was me. Are you oh, sure? You're amazing. No, it wasn't me. You're kidding me. I genuinely thought you thought that was me. Because you swung around like that. Yeah. Did you get that on camera? I was recording. What the hell was that? Already. I was going to say, heck? Heart, right? I'm not even joking today. The sound of something being thrown came from one of the nearby rooms. The two then split up, heading to different parts of the house. But while Dave was recording, something unnerving happened directly in front of him. Oh, the weight of it. Was this of the same incident? And it was the f f man. I literally just caught that on camera. So Dave caught this on camera. The light bulb just mysteriously dropped to the ground. There's some just weird stuff happening in this mansion. A glass bulb mysteriously fell from the ceiling, shattering to pieces as it crashed into the table. But after sitting untouched for decades, why would it now suddenly fall? Steve made his way from room to room, eventually stopping to examine an old safe. But as he did, something made its presence known. It's all rusty. Looks like the rats got to it. Oh, it's not budging. It's a lot of books on top. You guys see that? Okay. That door literally just slammed. Convenient timing, like, but. I can't believe I caught that. I don't think it was the wind, too. 
I mean, it is kind of windy in here, but why would it? But that thing blew towards me and the other door behind it is perfectly okay. I feel like it would have moved if it was the wind. That was bizarre. The door to his right suddenly slammed shut, quickly catching Steve's attention as he tried to come up with an explanation. He cautiously made his way to the other rooms in the house, but was on edge after witnessing the door closing, as well as the possibility of falling through these crusty-ass floors. From the footage they captured, there's definitely a chance that something is still lurking inside this mansion. I do keep seeing it, but face him is quite amusing with these little lines and stuff. Number five. Definitely worth watching. Yeah, the bit convenient, but the bulb, not sure. Not sure, it could have been thrown from off camera or something, I don't know. The trajectory seemed a bit strange, but... Hmm, what do you guys make of it? A man named Brennan from the Uncharted Travel YouTube channel set out to explore an old abandoned mine. After a dangerous hike up a mountain with a few close calls, he eventually made it to a massive staircase with the mine waiting 950 steps below. His curiosity led him from building to building around the property, until he eventually discovered a room with a door he could lock from the inside where he decided to set up camp. To help with his paranoia while sleeping, he brought something to set up in the building. Is I bought these little motion sensors. So this is just like your standard convenience store motion sensor. I think it said it did infrared as well as motion. I'm not 100% sure. I will be keeping this receiver in my tent here and moving this sensor to outside. And you can see when it detects motion, it'll give off this uh, that little chime. So if any animal or any person or anything comes in the middle of the night, I will be able to wake up and deal with the situation before they sort of see me. But he soon ended up regretting his decision to bring Sounds creepy, you know, it is. these motion sensors as they began to go off. I'm starting to think the motion sensors weren't the greatest idea. It went off once and like creeped me out and I went to go check on it. Unfortunately, I didn't film, but now it's silent. But like the fact that like it just went off one singular time and then now it's been silent for like 45 minutes is something. It's like it's skidding down the stairs. Props to him going and staying somewhere like that on his own, like, but would you? At least take somebody else for backup if you're going to do some sort of investigation or exploration. It sounded like something dropped and fell down the stairs. Could just be the old building. Was this tube always here? Do we go into the basement now? I mean, if it's something small like a mouse, I don't mind, but I don't wanna... Oh, it sounded like a mouse, man. Fuck. 
just now. What is it? Okay, that was a rat. But what was over here? Ominous music. After the sensor went off, Brennan went to investigate to ensure that no one else was in the building. But as he made his way downstairs, noises began to come from somewhere nearby. Assuming it was probably just an animal, he decided to continue until a loud crash came from directly behind him. His heart was racing as he stepped into the darkness, but luckily for him, he was unsuccessful at finding anyone. Now with a little more peace of mind, he went to sleep for the night until eventually waking up to this. That's like the third time the motion sensor outside has gone off. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna go check it out. But I have the motion sensor set right there. You can see it's going off because I'm here now. I haven't gotten much sleep at all. I've been listening to this. I just have podcasts in my ear just to kind of like drone out some of the noise, but it just makes... Okay, that... I think we need to go investigate that because I know I closed all the doors. So that concerns me a little. It's not windy. And all of these doors are closed. Well, except for this one, but this one's not budging. As you can see, it's like stuck there. It'd take a lot to move these ones. But it sounded like it was one of these doors. He woke up to the sound of the motion sensor repeatedly going off. And as he was talking to his camera, the sound of a door closing came from a nearby room. He rushed out of his tent, prepared to find something, but every door was closed and there was no one around. And unfortunately for Brennan at 3.30, things took a chilling turn. You can just hear the ambient sounds of this old building, like the wind's blowing and clearly it's making the wood creak and there's pack rats. Like I said, there's pack rats everywhere in this building. They're in the walls, in the floor, in the ceiling, the attic above me, the basement below me kinds of noise. After waking up to what he thought was the sound of someone trying to enter his room, the sound of footsteps can be heard outside the door. Despite the terrifying sounds happening around him throughout the night, the next morning finally came and he survived in one piece. Number six. 
I wonder if you've done any sort of follow up investigation like the morning after just having a quick look around. They look quite dusty and stuff, so you would have think you would have seen any extra footprints or anything like that that weren't necessarily his or animals or whatever. Um Props to him for going there and staying. But he didn't seem overly concerned by those footsteps at the end there. It just he just was talking about rats and things, but that Bloody big rat. What do you guys think? Six. A man named Mike on Reddit posted a video to the ghost subreddit of something that's been keeping him up at night. He currently lives with his kids in an old home that was built in the 1850s. One evening around midnight, as he was cleaning up, he heard something behind him that instantly sent him running. <sighs> There's a view. As he was bent over, a disembodied voice can be heard saying his name. Without hesitation, he immediately darted for the stairs, getting as far away as possible. He thought at first that one of his kids was downstairs, but when he saw no one behind him, he instantly got chills. This eerie childlike whisper sounds like something straight out of a horror movie, but at least his kitten instantly came to his rescue. Uh, Number I don't see the cat didn't seem to react, but I didn't even realize it had run in at that point. I thought it was just sat there chilled. Weird. For seven, Ian from the Midwest Ghost Hunter YouTube channel set there we go again. out alone to investigate the Roselawn Cemetery, said to be one of the most haunted cemeteries in Minnesota. This property dates back to 1886, and it's widely believed that restless spirits still linger around their graves. Ian bravely made his way throughout the cemetery, curiously peeking inside the large mausoleums. But while exploring the grounds, he heard something that caught his attention. Yeah, I've sort of commented on this guy quite a bit. I don't know why they keep putting him on these compilations to be fair because it's blatantly not right the way he sort of summons everything on demand it's i'm not even sure if we've seen this one we've seen one of them in a graveyard oh what the f what was that that was like a voice i just heard someone talking Holy crap. Hello? It sounded like a man's voice. It came from this way. Over by these tombstones. Is there someone over here? Okay, holy sh**. I heard that loud and clear. I just heard somebody clear as day. <gasps> oh shit. Oh shit. Holy crap. That was right behind me. Sounds like one of them type and talk things. Are you a spirit that is attached to one of these graves? Oh, whoa. Holy moly. That was just an orb. It just floated across this tombstone. An extremely faint disembodied voice was caught greeting in. And as he continued, this voice was caught again, saying, I'm over here. Then oddly enough, a glowing anomaly was caught gliding by. Ian then made his way near one of the strangest things I've ever seen in a cemetery. 
This here is a interesting uh, spot. Right there in the center is a sphere with a bunch of handprints on it. And what you do is you walk down this little spiral path that leads up to it. And once you eventually get to it, you put your hands on it. And you try to find a hand that fits your hand. It's kind of a strange but uh, interesting uh, feature. I've never seen something like this before in a cemetery. Could you give me a sign if you're here? Whoa. This thing just made a noise. What the heck? Dude, what the heck? This thing's making weird noises. I'll try to snap a photo of it. Whoa, weird. Dude, there's like a bunch of orbs all around it. What the heck? There's orbs floating everywhere. All around this thing. Several orbs were caught in different photos, closely resembling the one caught on camera earlier. He continued exploring, making his way deeper and deeper into the cemetery. But what happened next made his hair stand on end. <gasps> whoa, whoa, what the f Did that just move? That freaking angel just turned and looked at me. Do you see that? It's looking right at me. I'm actually really creeped out. With his camera in front of him facing a mausoleum, a small angel statue suddenly turned. This unsettling movement left the statue now facing Ian. He cautiously made his way over to the mausoleum, deciding to try his luck at communicating with a K2 meter. Like Dr. O, isn't it? It's called a K2 meter. It's a way that I can communicate with you. Are you here with me? Thank you. Yes. Did you move this angel statue? If so, touch the green light. You are. Thank you. Is this your mausoleum? I take it. Does this mausoleum contain your body? Yes. Thank you. So that means your last name must be Pearson, right? Is your last name Pearson? Yes, thank you. Pearson, I have a request for you if that's okay. Since you moved that angel statue just now, would you be able to move it again? If so, touch the green light. Ooh, okay, okay. Let's see if it moves. What? 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 Did you see that? Holy shit, it just moved again. I cannot believe that. Thank you. Thank you so much. The K2 meter continued to light up in response to his questions. Then incredibly, after asking the spirit if it could once again move the statue, the angel slid across the ground. This terrifying sight sent Ian reeling back in disbelief of what he just witnessed. He somehow continued on, trudging through the grass until he stumbled upon something out of the ordinary.
Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You see that? The door is open on this one. Whoa, that is really unusual. You normally never see this. All these vaults are kept locked. So it makes you wonder, how did this open? Either someone would have had to have had a key, or something opened it from inside. Hello? Is anyone in there? <gasps> Holy shit. Someone just said hello. Hi. What's your name? My name is Ian. I've got chills. I've got chills. <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! Did that just move? That door just opened even more! With the door to the mausoleum eerily opening on its own, Ian took this as an invitation to go inside. But little did he know what was about to happen. All right. Hope you don't mind coming in, okay? Jeez Louise. It is really creepy in here. I'm keeping an eye on that door. If that thing closes, you're gonna hear me scream. Bang. Oh. What the fuck? I just felt something touch my neck. Did you just touch me? I felt you just touch me. I'm getting a really eerie feeling in here, guys. Oh, what was that? Oh God, get me out of there. Oh, oh, oh God, damn. That thing just launched right at me. The vase on the ground aggressively jolted towards him, sending Ian sprinting from the mausoleum. This terrifying encounter made his blood run cold as well as mine just from watching it. If you want to see the rest of this investigation, make sure to check out the Midwest Ghost Hunter. Number eight. Yeah, like I said, all of it too convenient. Tell us if I'm wrong. Tell us if I'm wrong, but I, there's been a lot of stuff. He always seems to manage to catch exactly what he wants to catch. Photos, voices, movement. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think. Great. Reddit user character war 2442 would often experience strange things when he lived at home with his parents. Back when he was 17 and his brother was 14, they each had a room in the basement. One day out of nowhere, they began to notice peculiar things happening around them that they strongly believed were paranormal. Closet doors opening and closing on their own as well as the sound of disembodied footsteps walking around them. Despite telling their parents what they were experiencing, they never seemed to believe them. Fast forward to present day, this Reddit user and his brother no longer live at home. Well, one night, while his stepdad was working in the garage, he received a motion alert from the camera in the basement. And when he reviewed what was caught, his blood ran cold. <sighs> In the basement to the left, an unnerving dark figure can be seen. This spine-chilling figure resembles a person, but has no discernible features. Its pitch-black body almost looks to be nude, and something about it gives me an ominous feeling. Unfortunately, this Reddit user's stepdad wasn't able to catch it on video, but says as he watched the live feed, he witnessed this figure dart across the room before vanishing. 
I have absolutely no idea what to call whatever this is, so let me know what you think. I think we've seen this one before. Um, I in the way. Hold on. It's creepy. I think we have come across this one before. Make sure to follow me on Instagram to hear more from your boy. As always. Right, I think that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. It was... There was some good stuff in there again. Um, like I said, I, I'm not convinced by that Ian guy in the slightest. But um, if I'm wrong, please let us know. I just feel it's all far too convenient and on demand and never feels to find at least three or four sort of happenings but never mind yeah so that's that one guys hope you enjoyed it as i said please remember to sub to the channel ring the bell uh for alerts of other videos going live i'm hoping to get back to my live stream soon uh so keep an eye out for those as well if you want to discuss this or any other videos uh I'd appreciate you coming by or if you just want to leave your feedback in the comments i'll certainly have a read through and respond as quick as i can thank you very much guys in the meantime, have a good one, and I'll see you soon. Cheers, guys.